Hi, everyone. I'm Rich Scheibner. And I'm Liz Chamberlain. We're co-editors of Inventio. We're serious about the how of digital media scholarship. In Inventio, authors interrogate how their digital scholarship came to be. And as Inventio editors, we invite you to participate in this series. Reach out to us anytime at the Kairos email listed below. We also plan to reach out to more authors as the series continues. Until then, thanks for watching. I pretty much went in with no prep. I was just you know, trying to figure out instinctively. And it was not a very long book as well. So I had in my head that all that the second time I read it through, that's when I'll sort of start structuring my review. But the first time that I read it through, I will try and sort of check my own instinct and think about which chapters feel exciting to me, what uh, naturally feels like it should be highlighted or noted down as something that is really interesting and that sort of almost leads to the book determining its own review structure for me so for instance when I went in my review in the end came out structured in I think four or five parts where it was like okay, this section is suitable for teachers, this is suitable for students, this is suitable for a certain kind of political thinker or political activist. That's not what I had in mind. So I did not have those categories in mind uh, before I started reading the book. I just went in and when I sort of looked through my notes, when I was reading through the book a second time, I said, all right, there is something neat coming out. It feels like uh, Professor Ford, the author of the book, is speaking in different registers in different parts of the book, almost as if he means these parts to be read by different people. You know, I'm learning from the book itself. I'm, I'm not in a position where I can teach the author anything. Uh, not that I would want to. And that I think sort of makes the reviewing process slightly tricky. Uh, because you're also thinking about your own location vis-a-vis -vis the thing that you're reviewing, how much of an expert you consider yourself to be. And even if, you know, you have an authority over that knowledge, where are you located in relation to the author, uh, both in your career and in your own work? So, for instance, I work on pedagogy. I'm very interested in, uh, in, in communist pedagogy as as support sort of unfolds it throughout this book but that's not my area of research that's not what my thesis is on i work on irish literature i work on something completely different from what that book is about uh and in a sense what i say or what i read from that book has very little bearing on my own work it has some bearing on my academic thought but it won't find space i won't be citing professor ford's book uh in my thesis for instance and that also changes uh, how I'm approaching that book. So I'm almost thinking of it uh, as as a non-specialist who's reviewing a book purely out of interest, as opposed to, let's say, if I were reviewing a book on modernism or Irish literature or sound studies or James Joyce or something of that sort, then my stakes would be different. I used to review books for a for a newspaper and so for not not some of those were academic books but the reviews were meant for non-academic audiences or let's say non-specialized audiences and it was a very different sort of reviewing process where uh it was not so much about you know name dropping as as reviews often become i could not go in and say all right this person says this but uh uh, they've not considered this large bibliographic tract that I have in my mind and obviously you're familiar with such and such tradition of thought, no, none of that sort of work. So my training, I guess, came from there where, you know, editors for newspapers are merciless. They'll, they'll just strike down anything they see as being a bit too obtuse because they have a very particular audience in mind and they're doing the right thing. So that, I, I guess, sort of 
I think about it, train me in not entering any text that I am about to review with uh, with an academic perspective in mind or with you know a reviewing identity in mind. There are a couple of things that you need to be aware of, regardless which you know my professors have told me about. Where you know uh, one of the important uh, instructions that I received long, long ago is that you know whenever you're reviewing a book again as an early career academic, uh, you're sort of putting your opinion of someone else's work out there, and you have to be careful, right? So. which is why like i said you're not necessarily looking to say something is bad or something is horrible or this is just a one star book or anything of the sort you don't do that with academic reviews part of the reason for which is uh that you're still in early career academics so you were very aware of your positionality so that changes how aware you are at the sentence level when you're sort of done sort of explaining what is going on in this book and you're now trying to say something about the thing that you explain saying this is how uh this is what this thing has bearing on or this is where uh this is a sort of academic thinking this book is coming from we become very aware at a sentence level of what kind of words you're using whether you sound at all a bit arrogant or a bit denigrating which you know you might mean to sound that way but you shouldn't or you might not mean to sound that way but you still might so you become very aware of word choice it's just at the sentence level when i'm reading through my paragraphs i'm trying to think about whether everything that i'm saying is just completely up in the air or am i able to ground it in something that uh makes it well more enjoyable to read that makes it more useful to read for anyone who might be fortunate enough to be reading my review uh and that is an awareness that stays there i'm not i, I wouldn't say i'm really that aware of uh structuring at large where as i mentioned i'm not really aware of how this particular section is going to end in that sense it's a bit more organic a bit more instinctive the writing but there is a lot more awareness at the sentence level and at the level of how much abstraction is there in what i'm writing and can i ground that abstraction down to something more concrete uh so that stays yeah